break it to you, but sex education of the past failed us. Because birds and bees, they don't fuck! Welcome to the Birds and Bees Don't Fuck podcast, where we learn exactly how these dogs bark and how bad our formative sex education, or lack thereof, really was. I'm your host, Arielle Zadok. I'm a sex educator, intimacy coordinator, and a whole lot of other things. My guest today is Susie Dunn. She's a writer, comedian, producer, activist, and all-around badass bitch. And most importantly for me, my best friend. Welcome, Susie Dunn. (laughs) Also, you heard our sweet babies, uh, Babe, and uh, well, that was more Babe. That was definitely definitely Babe. She's discovered the the new child in the house, Ruby, Mm -hmm. the cat. Uh, so, you know, we may hear, we may hear some dogs here, uh, but tell me about you, baby. How are you doing today? First and foremost, I'm doing great. You know, it's the end of the week for us and, uh, I have a fun weekend of fun things planned and, uh, life is, life is lifing. It's doing what it needs to be doing. How are you doing? I'm good. It's, it's Coachella weekend this weekend. So oh, LA is going to be empty. It's going to be so nice. That's so nice. nice. <laughs> we love when people leave LA. Yes. Uh, it just makes it such a pleasant place. But LA is not where you are from. So where are you from exactly? Oh, yes. I am from Battle Creek, Michigan, which is a town of, I would say, about like 50,000 people in Michigan. So it's pretty small. Um, and it's very, like, I would say, wholesome type of town. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people uh, get married, get knocked up, and stay there. Yeah, 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 <laughs> no, yeah. not knocking that at all. But yeah, a lot uh, of people that are my age have like three kids at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah which yeah. is great. But yeah, but not for everyone. Yeah. So, what kind of a school did you go to? I went to a public school. Um, it was honestly a great public school, in my opinion. Um, we our elementaries were split up into four groups and then we all came together in sixth grade and then we were all together through high school that's cute i had a a junior high that was a little bit like that because we were massive it took like everybody from the entirety of like one area of this county and just Mm -hmm. like shoved them into one middle school so we had like four wings maybe five i don't know i think we had four wings and then we went to two separate high schools and it's like but why the wings just uh-huh. make two schools right <laughs> we had like a whole bunch of buildings yeah it's wired yeah so tell me about your sex education what was it like um sex education okay so I think like my first well you mean pub in public school sex education yeah, yeah. let's start there okay. like yeah. okay. when what okay. are what are your first memories of learning about sex in an institution okay yeah so I think that the first time if I remember correctly that we learned about sex ed was either it was like probably third second third or fourth grade probably third or fourth grade and we were definitely split up by gender Mm -hmm. perceived gender um and i know that like when we came back together there was this big conversation of like what the boys didn't learn about periods like yeah <laughs> you know? yeah like like wait we had a completely different but like yeah we learned about penises yeah and like we learned about like I would say that our education at that time was probably more like anatomy forward than mm-hmm. like sex forward and more like this is what your body what's going to happen to your body and like this is what's going to happen to boys bodies and like um less we did we certainly did have sex education eventually but like it was more about like anatomy and like what was going to happen to your body and I just remember all of us girls being like so wait the boys didn't learn but we learned about wet dreams but like they didn't learn about that we bleed oh (laughs) boy (laughs) (laughs) that is uh so predictable yeah (sighs) because so much of it and I don't know about you, but so much of it is like we're raised to fear them. Yeah. So we're taught what they do and what happens to them. And penises were like are kind of scary when you're like 
totally when you're in fourth grade and you don't have one and you're and it's like it's gonna get hard and it's gonna <laughs> it's a creature that changes <laughs> shape out of it and like and you know come out of it like, it's like what you know <laughs> like yeah and then you learn it's pretty cool because it could do the helicopter so right. you know it's just <laughs> it is it's an intimidating body part and so i get why girls would have to learn it but there's so much secrecy around Right. vulvas and periods oh. and all of that stuff especially like i can't imagine them at that time being okay teaching anybody and they still don't want to teach people about periods i think also like another thing that sticks out to me at that time was like we all were like oh so periods are going to be horrible like yeah. the, like we came out of that class and we were like so this is going to be bad yeah like this is you're going to bleed and it's going to be painful and you're going to have mood swings and then you get given a little like kit that has pads and tampons in it and like the tampons are so intimidating because they give you this like diagram like all tampons have that diagram in yeah them on how to use them. but again when you're like a 10 11 year old person you're just like wait what, wait how does, does that go? work like, what is what is that which part of me does yeah this go into? yeah you know? and you aren't really like I remember that piece feeling like that was missing. Like I didn't fully understand like what my vagina was, even though I had this diagram and I had this conversation, but I just like definitely learned from my mom that there was a third hole. <laughs> like I My did mom not, did not teach me that. I did not comprehend <laughs> that in school for sure. At least not at that age. Yeah. Like, yeah I yeah. mean, uh, so many people don't know that there is in fact a third hole. <laughs> How old were you, and you don't have to answer this, but if you would like to answer this question, how old were you, do you remember, when you got your period? Oh, uh, yeah, I'll answer this question. I was 13, and that was wild for my mom because we are very similar body-wise and, like, shape-wise and just, like, the way that our bodies work, very similar. And she didn't get her first period until she was 16. Wow. And so when I told her I had my period – she did not believe me <laughs> and she literally made me climb on a counter so that she could investigate oh my god <laughs> which is like mom I mean you know they didn't have the resources I was 13 so this is 2003 they didn't have the resource I'm gonna age myself but they didn't have the resources then obviously that we have now been like the conversation but like she did, just did not believe me with <laughs> like so paint the picture of this for me <laughs> about this whole countertop investigation <laughs> I literally came to her I think like after school probably and I was like mom like I've been like because I think my period started small and was like spotty um and then I, I had really bad periods eventually like when I started started getting really bad ones once I was like 15 16 years old but um so it was like really spotty and, and not a lot. And I was like, mom, I don't know, like I'm bleeding. And I think her concern was like injury, to be honest. Mm. And like, so I got to get up in there and look, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but she literally made me climb on top of her bathroom counter and like stand on the counter. And oh she like God. looked up inside of me. And then she was like, yeah, I guess you're on your period. Or she's just like, <laughs> yeah, 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 okay, okay. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're having a period. Yeah. Oh, there's a drop on my forehead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then I think that whole, like, third hole of it all really scared me for a really long time. Mm -hmm. And I really, like, I didn't use tampons for a really long time, which I think is common for people. Yeah. Um, and then I, even, like, my first tampon that I used my mom put lube on it for me. That's so sweet. Isn't that amazing? Oh yeah. my God. I think all of us have hundreds of memories of dry tampons yeah. going in, especially if you just took one out. Because guess what? There's no lubrication in there. Right. It's very unpleasant. No, it's very unpleasant. And especially I if it doesn't young. go in all the way and then you just have like yeah. this half tampon. And you don't know. And you're you like, know. is that what it's supposed to feel yeah. like? Is that and, and even once you have it in, you're like, what it's supposed to feel like and I think also like everyone tells you you don't notice it when it's in there and it's right but it's like okay not from a 12 13 yeah. 14 year old's perspective you sure as hell notice it like yeah me as a 33 year old woman I don't notice my I use a diva cup now yeah but I don't notice my diva cup inside of me at this point but like that's because a lot of things have been <laughs> things have been outside hanging out yeah, you know so having like, a good time yeah. serving purposes <laughs> so you know at this point it's more desensitized so I think like yeah I and I think just really what it drove was driven from was I wanted to go swimming mm. and like 
I didn't feel like I, which now I know it's flimsy now. I just free. I don't, <laughs> yeah. I don't care. I don't put anything in there, but. Well, you also get older and you understand that yeah. like when you go in the water, blood isn't just like trailing out of you. You're not just like doing the breaststroke. Like You're going to get you followed know. by a shark. Yeah, yeah. It just, you know, it kind of doesn't happen that way. Right. But boy, was that a myth that we believed. Yeah. Well, and I remember too being in gym class and like not using tampons yet. And we had to swim and like opting out of swimming. And it was like a whole yeah. thing. My teacher made me do yoga on the side pool in front of everyone. <laughs> oh man. And when we were younger, the pads that we used oh, were just terrible. fucking diapers. A diaper. They were actually diapers. I would they get were, rashes. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. were awful. And so long, so, so long. So long. And you're so little, like you're tw- yeah. your kid, you're a tween. Like you're so, yeah. You're yeah. for a lot of bodies. They're pretty. They're pretty small. They're pretty tiny. Also, frankly, our underwear isn't that exactly. Big. Like, <laughs> so you have like this huge, this it huge your diaper legs. that doesn't even. It's not even a full diaper. It's just like this long, like runway, and it's sticky. It's sticky, but somehow it still finds its way to slide up your back. Uh huh. It's sliding up that back, or it would like stick to my thighs. Yeah, and I would have to go into the bathroom and like unstick. Yeah, unstick it and. To my thighs just the way they work was pretty gross because you would just like have blood on you yeah like the the fabric that they used at the top of the pads was like it was trying to be yeah it was a pee pad like it was trying to be water resistant yeah but like it still kept it pretty moist up there and so like then it's and oh my gosh and then having to roll up this gigantic it would be like this big. I know that this is a primarily audio, but uh, just, you know, put your hands together from, you know, first knuckle to first knuckle pointer yeah, to yeah, thumb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's about how big yeah. these things were. And, and you're God like, forbid you're 13 and you don't have a little trash can next oh to you. Oh my toilet God. In the public restroom. Like, God forbid. <laughs> you know? Or how do you even get it into the restroom? Because if it's in your pocket, it's just it's like, like this a bulge. gigantic bulge. Yeah, that's like crinkly. In like pink, yeah, and pink. purple, uh huh, or like mint green, maybe. Oh my god, yeah, or maybe that light baby blue, right? Right, right, <laughs> yeah. They were never really yellow or green, though, were they? I had some mint green ones, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah, the super tampons tend to be yellow, uh huh, yes. yeah. Warning, 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 warning. <laughs> this person bleeds a lot. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, how so? How old were you when you started using um tampons? I was probably like 14 or 15. Okay. Yeah. So not, I mean, some people were still getting their periods then. Yeah. But I think it's just like, I hadn't had enough. I used the, I used them like for the pool. So that was like slowly. And then slowly I was like, okay, I just need to like switch over to tampons fully. Yeah. And I would say by high school, like I was using tampons fully. And then I probably switched to the Diva Cup in like my late twenties, I would say. But then there was also the stigma of being the girl to not use a tampon oh, yeah. and no one wanted to be that girl. You no. did not want to be the girl who was still using pads. Unless you were a religious girl and then they prided them themselves on it, which is yeah. sure that's your own dream. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't, I did not have a lot of like, for lack of a better term, like Jesus people, just because right. there's so many different ones. So right. I don't want to start <laughs> naming all the different sects and yeah, what no, have I you. I came from like Michigan, so we had a lot of Jesus yeah. yeah, we had a lot of Jews in my school. I mean, it was right. mixed, but like I, my parents wanted me to be in a Jewish well, neighborhood. Technically, Jewish I, people are Jesus people. <laughs> I Jesus mean, was Jesus was a Jew, so technically, all of them are Jewish. Well, they're not Jewish people, but that's a anyway. whole other podcast. <laughs> or maybe it's not. I mean, listen, sex education and religion. Uh, why do you think we don't have? Yeah. Oh well, that's you know? like something I definitely wanted to talk about um, because then, like sex education definitely expanded as I got older in my public school um and we were able to be in class together with the boys once we got older scandalous (laughs) um and I I would say that like my junior high sex education was actually probably pretty great like it it definitely like it was the midwest like abstinence is what we want you to do but they talked about condoms. They talked about abortion. Like they talked about all the all the ways to you know preserve from having a baby. And then also, uh, we watched like 
the what is it the gift of life the quintessential the, the, birth yeah, video yeah, yeah. 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 Where, and that woman I mean she is amazing she Bless is like her. she is chill as fuck in that yeah. video and like she is just going with it and like I mean yeah she's incredible but it is a traumatic video I she mean, also knew that she was being filmed and I bet that that was not her first child she I don't was probably think that was her like, first child. like I know yeah. what I'm doing here I know what I'm in for and I know I'm being filmed I just remember like <laughs> The moment when the head comes out and it's just this huge gush of yeah. like and everyone's fluids. like, what? And everyone's like, ah! <laughs> and I think she shits. Yeah, I don't But remember. I don't think that they like really make a deal of it, but I think that like our teacher talked about it. Um, but what I wanted to say was it was interesting though because I grew up in such a Jesus place. There were kids who their parents like literally they had to sit out of sex ed part of health class. I mean, that's still happening today, but still, right. wow. Like, they couldn't, because abortion was talked about and because it wasn't abstinence only, their parents did not allow them to even be in the class. They had to, like, sit outside of the class in the hallway and read a book. And guess who probably got pregnant. <laughs> yeah, or, or like, did not have healthy yeah, no. relationships with themselves or with others, but yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, that was, that was, and then I think also my high school health class I remember like I remember one day we were like going over a diagram of a penis and the teacher was like what is this part of the penis and I was like the shaft and I <laughs> was like oh my god Susie and I'm like what, what? It, it is, is. <laughs> it's the shaft <laughs> Did they correct you? Was she trying to say it was something different? I don't or remember she... what the diagram like called yeah. it, but yeah, it was just like one of those moments. I mean, it's literally where... what it's called. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and also like everyone in the class is like, so you've had sex. <laughs> and how, like what, that was in high school? Yeah, that was probably like sophomore year, I would say. Yeah. I lost my virginity when I was 15, I think. Mm-hmm. So it was, yeah, I probably had, I had definitely had sex. I don't know if I had had like penetrative. Yeah. Yeah. Sex at that point yet, but you know. Um, and was yeah. that, what was the average age, would you say, where you grew up? Of people losing their virginity. I mean, I hate that term, but yeah. like having, having their sexual penetrative debut. sex for the first mm -hmm. time. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I would say, Honestly, anywhere it was kind of a wide range. I think. I think it's really anywhere from like thirteen to eighteen. Like yeah, really, that makes sense. Like, truly, I just had that reaction. I'm sorry because yeah. <laughs> a phrase just came to my head instead yes. of saying sexual debut because that's like so wide. Right. It could be your penetrative premiere. Yes. Ah, penetrative your premiere. penetrative premiere. Yes. Oh yes. my gosh. I... Which not every. Has, exactly you know? yeah, and so yeah, that's why yeah. and you know and it's not always with a penis right. like you can have a penetrative mm -hmm. premiere mm -hmm. without a penis it's you true know. That's yeah true. I mean that would really if we want to break that down that could go down to fingering or toys or anything right. like that and that's honestly true. for me if we're talking about that then I was like a little baby because I was sticking things up there just out of curiosity so. oh with yourself oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah you know yeah, like yeah same yeah we we need better language because even saying sexual debut is not accurate either I mean honestly it doesn't matter yeah I think it's just like yeah the first time I had penetrative yeah sex but yeah penis um, penetration yeah premiere yeah P -P -P. <laughs> your triple p yeah when did you have your triple p <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I think I was probably 15 um but you know I think even with that it was like lack of there like the lack of education then like added to lack of result because then when I, I had a partner, partner, high school, but you know what I mean? Still, yeah. yeah. Say that. I had a partner who I was with for like a good chunk of high school and then another partner who I was with for the good chunk of the back half. Um, and once I had sex with that second partner, it was a whole different. And so I always wonder if I like actually really was ever penetrated by the first partner. I think I probably was time sometimes and sometimes probably wasn't. It was a very small situation which is great and, yeah you know but yeah so I just to like wonder <laughs> sometimes like well you also didn't know right <laughs> you didn't know right. you don't know what you don't know right so it's yeah which is like I think yeah I think and then and then like moving away from education within a within a, a 
institution, like my mom, I will say, I was very lucky to have her because she was just like always very open about everything to the point where the first time she had the sex talk with me, I was terrified of sex. Oh. And she was like, no, no, no. Like, that's not what I mean to do. <laughs> that's not, that, no, it's it's great and wonderful, but don't do it. Yeah, but it's wonderful, right, but just right, wait. But, right. ah. <laughs> but Also, like, sometimes it can hurt, but that's not yeah. totally normal. But it does happen a lot because no one knows about female pleasure. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, my God. oh, God. Like, where, how, what? Like, do you remember how she approached those conversations with you? I think that she did like the classic parent thing, which is like, once your kid brings it up to you, you address it. And I remember, like, I remember us being in a car and her like explaining it to me and me being like, it goes where? Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Um, and then she's like, but you don't have to be scared. Like, it's not, you know, it's a good thing. Like it's not a bad thing. Yeah. It's not a harmful thing. Like it might pinch a little or whatever, but like, you know, but I think I was way young. Like, I think I was like eight or something like probably too young like to have, too that young conversation. have that conversation and but, but like, if you brought it up then, then that's you, yeah, you know there, yeah. there is a lot to be said about following the lead of your child when it comes to sex education yeah. but how you respond to that is where right. you have to be careful and you have to be yeah. mindful because it is a scary thing and so you know you have to measure what information you're sharing even when they are curious right but that's where sex educators come in because parents are just not equipped well, to know what, what those boundaries say. are. That's yeah. what I was going to say too is like, again, this is like 98. Mm -hmm. So like they don't, my mom didn't have TikTok like yeah. sex educators being like, here's a great way to talk to your eight-year-old yeah. about that. You know what I mean? Like what parents have now. So I think she did a good job. Also, I will say my parents did not censor our intake of media at all. Mm -hmm. So like I remember being – like nine or whatever and watching night at the roxbury and molly shannon is like i'm feeling horny yes! and i'm like what does horny mean <laughs> you know? like, my parents are like god why we oh. we're trying to be like cool parents but then now we have to deal with our choices like you know <laughs> yeah cool parents have to deal with their cool yeah. choices yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my yeah. god and the the media of the 90s i mean listen oh. the media of everything Pre me too and post me too. All sex was was like women getting jackhammered. <sighs> like that's all it was. Yeah, in, yeah. You know. I mean, we still see it now. Like when I'm watching movies now, even the ones that I know the intimacy coordinators on, because we can only do so much to really change the narrative. It's right. still like the scene is like wham, bam, penis is inside, and it's like that's not real. Right. Once, once in a blue moon. It'll happen that way under very specific circumstances. And a lot of that does have or to do with like a reoccurring new love. partnership or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's less in reoccurring partnerships than. Well, I just mean if new... you're like, if you know each other and you're like, we're just getting into it. Like, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. But yeah. even at that, it is, it's more common for it to happen and to be good with a new partner because right. then you're dealing with all those new hormones right. versus an established partner because you don't have any of those hormones playing in your favor. Right. But I mean, that's a whole other conversation on desire and responsive desire and spontaneous desire and, right. and the difference between those two things. But media, especially in seventies, eighties, nineties, two thousands, all of it, you know, specifically when we were growing up and, and I'm about 10 years older than you, something like that. So the, my perspective is a little bit different. I probably had worse stuff. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> worse stuff. Cause maybe we were getting a little bit better in the nineties, but like not, Really, not but really, most but of it yeah. was like a lot of rape culture. Oh, a lot, a of, lot rape culture. of rape culture. And also, I was just thinking in my head, like I was trying to like think of like sex scenes where the woman is on top. Oh yeah, no. And like I don't really like I really feel like no. my media perspective of sex for even now, like other than Sex in the City, like mm -hmm. I feel like Sex in the City is the first time that we like really started to see women being on top. And God forbid you see a bigger woman on top. Yeah. I still oh, don't yeah. know. Oh. Yeah, no. Maybe, probably shrill. I'm sure. sure I'm yeah, sure yeah, that yeah. AD made that happen. I, I don't rem Yeah, I'm yeah. sure because she's awesome. Uh, but yeah, we, we don't see those things. We don't – the the narrative around sex in media and in life was never yeah. about the person with the vulva taking charge. It was never from that perspective. It had nothing to do with their pleasure. And it was all about being at the mercy and the whim of the person with a penis and what that penis was doing. I feel like 
even with pornography, probably until about 10 years ago, you would have to, like, type in woman on top. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? It was like, a subset. Like, it wasn't yeah, even, like, it's like, like, a kink. The norm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. But sure, yeah. Yeah, my kink is having an orgasm. Okay? <laughs> right. That's my right, kink. Right. <laughs> my kink is having autonomy. Yeah, yeah, you know? My kink is consent. Yeah. <laughs> my kink is equitability. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of consent, is that something that you remember ever oh. learning in classes with your mom? Any any sources of consent? Yeah, I think definitely we learned about consent, but I don't think in a very comprehensive way. Like, I think it was like, you better get consent. And it's like, but there was no like, what what does that look like? What do those conversations yeah. sound like? How do you ask for consent? How do you say no? Like, how do like, pra- like, I know that there's a lot of sex ed courses now that teach yeah. teenage girls, they have them practice saying no, mm-hmm. you know, we didn't have anything like that. But the, I think we did have like the mention of it and like that consent is important. And like, if without consent, then it's rape. But I don't, but I mean, well, what does that mean, right? We didn't yeah. have that conversation really either. Like, what is what does that look like? Yeah. And what does that feel like? And how do you know that that's happening to you? And and there are variations of that, right, that we talk about now way more like like taking a condom off without telling your partner that you've mm-hmm. taken a condom. Like, I certainly never was told that until I was probably in my, like, mid-20s. Oh, 100%. And that had happened to me before I was told that was yeah. rape, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I already even had that experience. Ejaculating before. inside someone right. without their consent. Right. Like, yeah. Hello. Yeah. Uh, all of those things. And, and I mean, for me, when I think about it, I, I mean, I have a terrible memory, so I don't really remember much of my sex ed. Maybe that's why I want to do this podcast. Right. I don't know. Right. <laughs> um, but I just remember no means no from dare. Like right, I remember right. so much more about saying no yeah. from drugs yeah, yeah, than yeah. ever yeah, about yeah, sex. Yeah. 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 So I think, I think it was like, and I don't, I, I would also say that I don't think that, and again, this is like kind of heteronormative, but I think when you're dealing with children, there's a lot of heteronormativity happening. Mm-hmm. Um, and most people's experiences are more heteronormative, but I didn't, feel like there was like a sense of that boys needed to learn more about that than girls did like it was just like you all are responsible for this and it's like but are they listening though because like they're the ones who are probably gonna blow past yeah like so there wasn't you know there wasn't like this hey guys you need consent to put your penis in someone you know it was just like consent is good consent should happen and just pretty general I don't know that that was ever part of whatever sex education I would that I say had. that that probably didn't happen until the no. 2000s like I bet you like yeah. I don't think I learned about consent until high school no sure. I mean I graduated high school in 2001 so yeah. I mean really yeah. the crux of my education was like part of the 90s right, right. that's when I would have been learning about everything and oh. I don't even really remember much of anything media wasn't even talking about consent in the no, 90s. no like, no 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 I mean everything like my mom watches a lot of 2020, so right. I very much grew up with basically her telling me, like, your skirt is too short, or don't show that much, or be careful, or don't t- – like, well, the, that the was messaging when... that I got was and, – and many other people as well – was basically, boys want to rape you. Well, and that was when we had the narrative that it was strangers who were going to rape you. It was like, you're going to go out in the street – on the sidewalk of New York wearing mm-hmm. that skirt and the stranger is going to swoop you up and, and rape you. And that was, we weren't talking about like, no, your boyfriend is going to rape you. Your uncle, your, yeah. your mom's friend, your family friend, like your, you know, the per, like the boy at high school is going to do this to you. Like we weren't talking about that. Again, that didn't, that narrative wasn't prevalent until I was well out of high school. Yeah. Like, I, w- I would agree with that. I know for me personally, it was like, all men. All of them are going to, yeah. All yeah. of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All of them want to fuck you. Yeah. So watch out. Because someone, mean, you know. I mean, that's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my mom still has hangups about that, about like me sex coaching and stuff right. like that. And she's like, these men, I'm like, these men need help. Right, right. And who are they going to listen to? Right. Someone who looks like me or someone who looks like, you know, their 50 year old grandpa. Right. Well, not grandpa, but like, you know, sure. like some fucking schlubby guy. Right, like, right. There, if, if, it, if this gets their attention, Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so glad you're here. Also, you want, if they're a partner, if they partner with the opposite gender, learning from the opposite gender can only be 
Oh, yeah. Positive. Yeah. Yeah. My therapist is a man. I love it. Yeah. He's he's like the first. I, can, I couldn't do it, but. <laughs> oh, no. I, I, I mean, well, here's the thing. I always had female therapists, and I was like, this is cool and all, but I really get along with men, and I can really talk to men. Yeah. So that should probably be who I work with as a therapist, because I have that like I just have a really great connection with with men mm-hmm. and so maybe there is some healing that can happen there. I mean I I started therapy just as the fact that I had money and because I work with clients and I'm like, well, you know, when you're a therapist it's required that you're in therapy. Right, right. I'm not going to be a therapist. I'm going to stay at the coach and counselor level, but I'm still like that I I still got to do therapy. have the resource, you should use it. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, like yeah. always yeah. no matter where I'm at unless it's like dire I will always be in therapy just for that reason. And so I think maybe if I was experiencing trauma, maybe I would have gone to somebody. I don't, I don't think so though. I was really just looking for somebody who had the expertise and I was like, you know what? Maybe I work with a dude this time. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't do that, but I support that. And maybe that'll change for me. But yeah, I I feel that like always being in therapy, even right now, like I, I am doing fertility, so I can't afford both that and therapy and I'm still going to therapy once a month like, yeah. you know like yeah. I'm just like this has to be a priority though like yeah and even know. that growing up and back in the day was like so hush hush and whispered about yeah. and like it was such a taboo thing and it was such it was a rich person's thing yes. it was a rich fucked up person's thing to yes. do and it's like no no uh, uh, like you gotta drink water you gotta talk about being a human in this life yeah I have a lucky scenario with that cut well I did grow up very privileged uh first of all so there's that but I uh had I have severe learning disabilities and so I was in programming for it growing up and I had to do a bunch of testing and like that's all through therapists and mm. so I had therapists growing up because I had to to be in yeah. the program that I was in uh and so I think that I and then also I wanted to throw myself off of a building taking Adderall so uh you know <laughs> So I needed, I needed uh, guidance at a young age, but then I didn't, I wasn't in therapy all through high school then. And like in my early twenties, because it just wasn't accessible. Mm -hmm. And like you said, like it wasn't as normal. It wasn't like the thing that you did. Um, But yeah. Oh, there was one other thing that I did want to really touch on with you because I feel like you will totally get this Um, because I did lose my virginity at 15. I was like one of the first girls in my group to lose because I was dating an older boy. He oh, was like, yeah. Mm-hmm. He was a sophomore in high school and I was in eighth grade when we started dating. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> yeah. I went to prom three years. Uh, oh my God. My mom did not let me go to prom until it was my boyfriend that was a year ahead of me. I got asked when I was yeah, younger and yeah. it was a hard no. Uh, but yeah. Because <laughs> again, that bitch thought everyone wanted to fuck me. Well, she did not want me in any situations where that was possible. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But so um, being like the first girl in my group, like it was quite interesting because slut shaming was so prevalent Mm. at that age and I think it was really backed up by education and like backed up by what we had learned and then also some of those girls were the girls that sat out so they didn't you know they weren't even in there for like the normalization Mm -hmm. of like what you could do to prevent babies and like what you could do to prevent um and infections and diseases um but I they made a group (laughs) we've talked about this but I just thought I would share it on here they made a group that, that I was not allowed to be in that was called the Black Bra Society. Wow. <laughs> and the, the catchphrase, this is really creative for high schoolers. The catchphrase was, um, we tease you, but we won't please you. <gasps> we'll make your balls blue, but we won't follow through. Oh my God, that's terrible. And I wasn't allowed in. <laughs> Because I wasn't a virgin. Wow. But the best part was, I mean, now, you know, I can look back at it and I can laugh. But, like, the yeah. funniest part was that there were two girls that were in it that weren't virgins either, but they of were course. honest about it. Of course. <laughs> That's always the case. That but is- I knew because, of course, I knew. <laughs> but I wasn't going to, like, out them because I'm mean. But Yeah. But that <laughs> is such a thing. Also, I'm just looking at that thing now. And I think the was intro it- that I recorded was on preview and not on live. 
so oh, it's recording. <laughs> no, but oh, you okay, see the okay, music okay. thing. This oh, is our I first see. episode okay, okay, ever. Uh, so I mean, I you thought I hit the live button. Intro. It's fine. We might we're gonna see what yeah. the people wind up with at the end. But you, you know, it's intro. all it's all a learning process. Yeah. Um, I was in a, a little club that you would have for sure been a part of. So <laughs> I would have been invited this time. You would have absolutely been invited into this club. <laughs> it was called DLC Dick Lovers. No, Dick Lips. Was it Dick Lovers or Dick Lip, Dick Lips? I found the card. Well, we ma- we made ourselves laminated cards oh, we I like laminated it with club. scotch tape <laughs> yes. and it was basically like it was me and a couple of my girlfriends and uh I don't think any of us had had penetrative sex at the time but we loved sucking dick yes and I was the type growing up that like I really didn't have like I wasn't interested in like fucking all these people and like having penetration with people but like I would hook up and suck dick like it was right. super fun I still love sucking dick like yeah. I'm a fucking world champion over here put me in a contest I am ready <laughs> but it was like we were like 14 or 15 yes, or something and like we sluts. yes 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 and we had like these little cards uh that we just like kept in our wallets I and we made it like so and it much. had like the founding members oh and it was God. the three of us wait okay so <laughs> That's amazing. When I was a teenager, there was this thing that happened where bracelets became like a big thing and everyone wore like a ton of bracelets Mm -hmm. and then it turned into like a coding thing. And then there was one summer where I was caught. I mean, all right. We, again, when you look back at your sexual experiences as an an adult, you kind of see them differently. I actually think this was a little bit of, of me being assaulted, but I can still find comedy in it because it happened to me and it was my experience. But I was kicked out of summer camp for giving a kid a hand job. And the reason I say that I think it was a little bit of assault leaning is because he kept, like, I kept saying no and he kept pushing it. And I kept saying no and he kept pushing it. And eventually I did it of my own free will. But it's like I'm a young after person. A lot of after a lot of no. And, and yeah. it, that's just not, That's you know. how a lot of hookups happened. Yes, yes. Uh, quote, unquote, <laughs> hookups happened back yes. in And that's not days. how I... I would just walk away now, but I'm an adult with autonomy and not stuck on a bus next yeah. to a boy um, and not like needing people's approval. Um, but so when I got kicked out of summer camp for that, um, my <laughs> my dog, <laughs> hey, babe, babe, mm-hmm. come. Good girl. Hi, sweet girl. <laughs> Mommy's telling us stories about sucking dicks. <laughs> when I got kicked out of summer camp for that, um, I came home and I just remember my dad sitting across from me and being like, and you have to take all of those bracelets off. And I had no idea what he was like. We hadn't heard that yet oh, at my school. Like yeah. that wasn't, we just wore them like, yeah. and we just traded them. It was very truly innocent. And also my summer camp, we made them like we just, that was like what we did to pass time because we didn't have iPhones. Yeah. Like we just, were these like the, the string bracelets? Yeah, there was oh, string bracelets those. with like beads and stuff. And yeah, then I also yeah. had the other ones that were plastic, but like it was a mix. And my dad was, like, so serious. Like, he was just like, you have to take those off. Like, and then, like, come to find out, like, he'd watch, like, a dateline. Of course. I, like, told him. Dude, that, that's what that I'm saying. That, yeah. My mom watched so much 2020. Right. Every single Friday night, we would do Shabbat dinner, and then she would watch Barbara Walters oh, no. on 2020. Oh, and Barbara. she's, I mean, still to this day. And Barbara's a slut shamer, I'll tell you that. Well, a lot of them were. Baba Wawa. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. Another problematic white woman. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, she did do a lot of good interviews, but anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah, those shows, they may have ruined our parents a little bit. Yeah. It's like there's a lot more to the world. Like, you're only seeing that one perspective of all of the bad stories. The whole point of those shows is to show you all the bad right, stories. Right, right, like, right. All the scary it's stuff. It's not to show you the good stuff. It's to scare the living shit out of you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and I think, again, I think that also all of that derives from like the lack of sex education that I'm sure my parents didn't. Like they didn't have when they, I mean, they were in the 70s. They like, yeah. you know, like they did not that have. Was- yeah. not no, even there was no I mean and you know I think one of the biggest things that sticks out in my mind about my sex education was like the diagrams yeah like just the funny diet like we just we I feel like I always had like a diagram of like a human body and the side penis that, yeah a side yeah. penis and like a and like a vulva that kind of had information but probably was just like fallopian tube fallopian tube yeah you know like and not 
Labia Majora, like, you know, like, not so deep like that. Hey. Hey. <laughs> How do you feel like you learned about pleasure? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think that there's, like, been different tiers in my life of learning about pleasure. Uh, I think, unfortunately, the relationship that I was in, I was in a relationship for five years from when I was 18 to 23. And I think, unfortunately, that relationship was, like, quite sexually abusive and, like, a, like nothing, not, my pleasure was not a part of that at all in any way. Um, and so I think I was quite repressed with, like, self-pleasure at that time and more obsessed with like partner pleasure Mm. which is good like to learn about learn you know partnering or pleasuring a partner but um when it's so heavily imbalanced it can like really be a disservice and then um I broke up with this person when I moved to LA and I (laughs) remember a girlfriend of mine being like oh you need to get a vibrate you don't own a vibrator and I was like no, I guess I don't. Like, I just was with someone for five years and we had sex, like, every day. So I just never, like, thought about it. And they were like, oh, no, no, that's yeah. not. <laughs> like, yeah. no, no, no. Even if you are doing that, this is still. You got to like, get a vibrator, you got, baby like, girl. Wait a minute. And, and, like, and it's funny because, like, I would have, I still considered myself such a sex positive person at that time, but just a very different perspective of what that looks like was what I was living as then versus now. Um, and I went to the pleasure chest. Yay, pleasure chest. We In love LA. the pleasure chest on this podcast. Yes. Maybe and one I, day they'll sponsor me. <laughs> and I, like, they're lovely there. Like, they're so, like, I just, like, they're so tender yeah. there. And they're so good at being like, what's your situation? Mm-hmm. And, like, let me show you things to help your. And I remembered um, talking to this woman and, like, being like, I'm going through a breakup and, like, then explaining to her that I was like just discovering that I had been like sexually traumatized in the relationship and I didn't realize. Um, And she was like, I think we need to explore some external pleasure for you. Mm -hmm. And like, like, so let's pick a toy that has penetrative pleasure because that's something that you're familiar with, but let's help explore external or external pleasure for you and so I got the Lilo which oh I still yeah I love, love Lilo still to this all day. their products they're great their products yeah. are fantastic where it where it can go you know in, inside but mm-hmm. it also has like a like a you know a sort of flat like yeah head on it to be for external pleasure as well um and I like just <laughs> like totally had the like sex in the city Charlotte when she gets the rabbit and yes. she's just like, I, oh, I'm busy. Like, yes. I, I'm too busy to do anything. Yes, yes, yes. You know, <laughs> like just me and my vibrator in the bed for days. Uh, and then I like accidentally taught myself how to squirt. <laughs> and, like, I was like, wait, what? And then, What's like, possible here? Yeah, yeah. And then I think like, yeah, I've been on the then and then once you start there where you're like learning how to self pleasure yourself with just yourself with a machine then you're like how do i pleasure myself with my own hands how do i pleasure myself with a partner how do i pleasure myself with a partner with a machine how do i t- like learn how to have a partner's hands pleasure like their mouth whatever i still am working on the mouth pleasure i i i don't get as much out of oral for myself mm-hmm. um i i like giving but i'm receiving um a lot of people with vulvas say that um uh, I think a lot of that comes down to the skill. Yes. And the, yeah, it's yeah. the skill set of the person that's yes. actually doing it. And yes. there are a lot of really great resources yes. to help teach them that. Yeah. That's something that, yeah, I've definitely been talking about with a partner of mine. But um, yeah, uh, I think, and yeah, and then I just was like, oh, well, like, it, it, I like, then I realized, like, then I had a partner when I was probably like 25 or 26, who, so like probably three years later, who, uh, only wanted to pleasure me and like didn't want me to put and I and I remembered being like okay like that's cool that that's what you want but we're not compatible like Mm -hmm. I'm a very equitable yeah person and looking for equitable uh experiences and so I think it's just like once you like for me it was like the key was to unlock learning how to pleasure myself to then learn what I actually wanted and learn what I actually liked and like coming out of this just like very repetitive very same sexual relationship with the person that I was with for five years. Um, yeah. But yeah, self-pleasure. It really unlocks. <laughs> yeah. And I think it makes you a better 
For sure, it makes you of a better course. life I mean, for yourself. You how know? can you possibly, well, first of all, when it comes to yourself, how could you possibly communicate to somebody else what right. you like and what you need right. or what you don't like right. if you don't know yourself? Yeah. And then when it comes to exploring someone else's body, if you haven't even explored your own, you're not going to have the tools and the insights that it takes to explore someone else's body. Right. You know, there's well, so much that can be gained from that. For sure. And even like tools for adults for sex education, mm-hmm. I think have expanded so much in like in the last, and it's just with the internet, right? Yeah. Like everything has education of anything has expanded, but, um, and there's just so much more accessibility. And like, as we all learn how to use the internet more too, there's more available to you. But I even like when I was first starting to pleasure myself more, I remember like porn felt like the only way to educate yeah. yourself, you know, cause it was like the most accessible and like there was so, there's so much of it. And, but I struggle with porn and like, I just, I'm not like, I, I really, there's Belasco is great. Yeah. Um, Erica Lust is great as well. Yeah. There's, there's, there's definitely so many resources yeah. now that are great. Mm-hmm. And like, uh, but this was back, you know, yeah. in 2013 when they're really like, it wasn't like that. Like yeah. porn again was just, Ethical porn was not really it thing. wasn't really a thing. And like, yeah. yeah. So, um, even just trying to like walk. Like, I remember just trying to watch porn and being like, well, that's not. This, <laughs> like, this doesn't seem This just fun. makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, it you was know, a lot yeah. of that. And a lot of, like, watching these women that you're like, Sex well, that shit ain't real. You. Like, yeah, yeah, it's happening to you. That's not real. And I don't yeah. want that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Or just, like, that looks like a lot of work. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Uh, Susie, it's time for a pop quiz. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. When a person with a penis gets a vasectomy, oh. what is cut? Oh, um, so I think that it's the, because it's reversible. So I think that it's like the tunnel that goes from your ball, your testicles into your penis. And there's like a, a block that happens in between them. But I don't know what it's called. It is called a vas deferens. A vas deferens. That's why it's called a vasectomy. Oh. And it is uh, a tube, yes, yes, that connects from the scrotum into the prostate where yes. the – so the, the sperm comes from – the testicles, they travel up their little tunnel, the vas deferens, then they go into the prostate, which is where the milky white fluid uh-huh. is combined with the sperm to create all of the cum. Uh-huh. And then pew, 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 pew <laughs> goes out the head of the penis. So when you get a vasectomy, which by the way, it's not actually that reversible. Most of them are not reversible. You would have to have a very deep discussion with your healthcare provider around that. So uh, don't go around thinking that vasectomies are reversible. They are more reversible than tying your tubes. There is absolutely no way around that one. Mm -hmm. Um, So do talk to your healthcare provider about that if you're looking for it to be reversible. But what happens is that they do um, just kind of snip that little tube so that the sperm cannot go go, from the testicles up through into the prostate. So the prostate is going to continue to create that seminal fluid that's going to go out of the head of the penis, but the sperm is going to be stopped because it can't go through that tunnel. The sperm is going to be continuing to be produced. Um, People with penises produce sperm for the entirety of their lives. Mm -hmm. You can impregnate someone after you're dead which is fucked up. But uh, please don't go fucking dead people and trying to have their babies. That's wrong on every level. (laughs) However, (laughs) the sperm that has now nowhere to go, it just gets absorbed into the body and then more sperm is made and it's not going to make anybody pregnant. So it's the vas deferens that is cut and that is the vasectomy. And it is mostly you know, it's not pain free. It's just kind of discomfort for right. a few days. Uh, but guys, if you are very sure you don't want to have a baby, just snip, snip, please. Cause y'all can make babies 365 days for the entirety of your life. Once you have go through puberty, uh, people with uteruses, if they have the ability to make babies can only do it realistically one day, but tops five because sperm can live sure, in you yeah, for yeah. five days. Right. So, you know, That's going to be somebody else's question. So listen up and take notes. Uh, Yeah. 
Yeah, I didn't tell you that there was going to be a pop quiz. I'm not telling anybody that, so unless they listen to the podcast, they're not going to know that there's a pop quiz. This is very Leo of you. (laughs) It's a sex ed podcast. I love it. Of course I'm going to give you a test. I'm here for it. Oh, Susie, done. Um, Is there anything else that you wanted to share or talk about? Um, I think just that I, what I would want to say is like, because this podcast is, I'm assuming mostly adults will be listening to it. Um, so I would just say that like, there's never an end to educating yourself on sex. And like, and the thing is, is like, we all were failed. Even, even me, who I feel like I did actually have a pretty comprehensive sex education growing up between my public school and my home life. Um, but I think there's like there's so many resources now and there's so many great resources and like I feel like I have a pretty keen idea of a lot of things and then I'll read something and I'm like wow I learned something new today and like now I feel more empowered or I feel like I understand something like better or whatever so I would just say that like get your ego out of there and continue to educate yourself and like remember that like you'll be able to not only be a better partner for others but also be a better self partner for yourself and um yeah that's all I would say preach 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 I'll also (laughs) add to that that sexuality is a science and a study that we are continuing to learn about consistently so researchers researchers are learning more scientists are learning more educators are learning more so even for us that are working in the sexuality space there is infinitely more information and knowledge that is yet to be discovered so even for us it's essential that's why you yeah, know you continuing education going. like we yeah. have to be in continuing education we're constantly taking classes because it is a it's very new like the research on sex is very new and very problematic because for the most part a lot of sex research was happening in schools which right. is young it's young people it's white people it's privileged people it's ah! educated people yes exactly babe um <laughs> so you know yes and like all medical fields, your test subject is generally a white cis male. Exactly. So you're like you're yeah. But now we're changing that and developing away from that. So. Yeah. So yeah. so much more to learn. Yeah. Uh, where where can the people find you? Uh, you can find me on most socials. I really only am active on Instagram, but everything is boss witch or the the boss witch or underscore boss witch. Um, but yeah, Instagram at boss witch, and yeah, you can slide into the dms appropriately um (laughs) uh, yeah but i'm not i don't want you to ask me out but um you can say hi (laughs) is there anything that you've got going on that you want to plug um yeah i do stand-up comedy i don't have anything specific because timeline wise but um you can find any of my like if i'm doing any shows i will definitely post it on my instagram and then i started a probably quarterly show called snack time so um hopefully by the time this airs there'll be a snack time coming out in like a month or two from then so yeah just keep your eyes out for that and by the way she gives us snacks you get <laughs> snacks at snack time who doesn't want a bag of snacks handed to you when you're about to watch a comedy show, it's delightful. It's, great. it's delightful. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. I love you so much. Thanks for you're me. I love you so my much. best friend. And we have so many sex conversations, and I look forward to so oh, many more. You're a resource that I am. <laughs> so, I, I, not everybody has an REL. So, if you guys have the internet, and I'm sorry you don't have an REL. But. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see if I can make this music happen on the outro. And uh, let's let's start it somewhere around there.